You got your mama's sunshine. You got your daddy's rain. You're like a piece of heaven in a hurricane. Hey everybody, welcome to this week's episode of Off the Mountain Podcast. We got a skeleton crew today. And myself, uh, Josh Vietti, have my dad here, Pastor Ron Vietti and Vincent Sierra. Hey. And uh, we're going to talk about uh, what we're going to talk about today. Oh, to start out and say something about the Super Bowl. Yeah, it was a good game. Did it go the way you thought it would go? Yeah. Me I too. mean, Me I too. thought the Chiefs would win. Um you know, they, they're experienced in winning Super Bowls, and Patrick Mahomes, uh, and I'm not a football guy, so forgive me, guys, but uh, Patrick Mahomes seems to be uh, somebody who plays really well under pressure, right? <laughs> yeah, say the least. I was rooting for the 49ers really a lot. I really want them to win. But as I, we text one another right before the game, and I said, I don't think they're going to. I think they're outclassed. Mm. So I said, I really, really pray I'm wrong. I think they're outclassed. Andy Reid's a great coach, uh, and he outcoached the San Francisco 49ers, I believe. Um, it seemed like he did really good That's plays. my take. I think the play calling for the 49ers stunk yeah. in the second half. Travis Kelsey needs to be fined for uh, yelling and screaming in Andy Reid's ear. That's no, my, it's, yeah, that's oh, my at opinion. At least he needs a public apology to yeah, that Yeah, he's, he's a punk, man. I, that I, was I'm not, bad. I'm not a fan of him. And he, I mean, not that I was before, but uh, and it, it has nothing to do with the whole Taylor stuff. It's just you treat people with respect. What are people wrong. saying on the Internet today about that? Uh, you know, people are just calling him out on it, and and uh, not many are defending him. Because you, you can't scream at it. Uh, first of all, he's your coach, right? Right. It was somebody posted something on X on Twitter, old the old Twitter, and uh, they said something like, uh, I mumbled, <laughs> I mumbled that I should be playing this game, and my my defensive line coach uh, made me do 50 push-ups in high school. So, you know, it's just, it's a respect thing. Um and well, at that level, they the should 20, have the respect. $24,000 know? question. Will Taylor Swift put up with this very long? I don't know. If he man. starts to lose his temper like this. You know, I don't I don't know much about Taylor Swift other than my daughters like their, their music all of a sudden out of nowhere, which is so weird because they don't know <laughs> anything that's going on. So I don't know how that's happening. But, um, but yeah, no, I, I think that Taylor Swift has spent a lot of time building a re- reputation, and uh, I think she cares about it. And... Uh, Travis Kelsey just really blew it, um, in my opinion, in how he acted, you know? Yeah, and that was just wrong all the way around. Yeah. That's an older man. And he, I, I mean, maybe I'm exaggerating. I just looked at it. What, what quickly, bothers me the most. You could have knocked him down. Yeah, what bothers me the most about it. And, you know, he was in the heat of, of, of a right. game. Yeah. I understand that. There's a lot of emotions. Right. But what bothers me the most, if he's willing to scream and yell at that man um, like that, on a national, not not just a national stage, the national stage, right? right. The international, yeah. the biggest, most televised event mm-hmm. in the world, right? He's he and he has no issue with doing that in front of all these people. Then he's what what kind of disrespect is he doing behind the scenes? And also, what kind of a precedent does this set for uh, young people? Yeah, you know, I mean that's the it's hard part. Right? Yeah, it's I think I mean they have to be role models constantly on and off yeah. the field. And so and, I understand that part of it. Yeah. It's also, um, I don't know how much mental health plays in, in the role, but I know that losing your temper, even in a game like that, which I, it's expected to an extent, mm-hmm. but losing your temper and staying angry and pouting and all these things, like those are things that, that could be fixed with, um, not only respect, but also, uh, having a habit, a good, clean, healthy habit right. um, of thinking good thoughts. You Listen know? to some of these top stories. Yo, Travis Kelsey, this isn't cool. Fans smack Chief Star for his Super Bowl outburst. Second one, Super Bowl, furious Travis Kelsey grabs screams at Coach Andy Reid. Another one, for just a second, Travis Kelsey cracked under the pressure of a new world of fame. Yeah. And, uh, well, to, 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 uh, compare his attitude with the attitude of like Brock, uh, or not Brock, what's his name? Uh, is that his name Brock Purdy? Is that yeah. It? yeah. Okay. Yeah. Property. Um, his attitude, just, just seeing him again, I'm not a big football guy, but watching, I watched Super Bowl, obviously, um, just seeing his attitude before the game saying, yeah, I pray, I pray for the game. You know, I, I, I asked I, the Holy I asked, Spirit. I asked God to, yeah, I asked God to give me an even kill mind to just hmm. have a yeah. focused mind to be calm. Like all that is so inspiring to me. You know, well, did you see the interview uh, in the uh, pre before the game started with uh, Patrick Mahomes? 
And the guy was saying, you know, you're going to go down the best. He goes, no, no, no. He said, quit saying that. You are. Mm. But he tried to deny it all. Right. He and, and Patrick Mahomes said, I, I want to be a good role model. Mm. Yeah. And he is. He seems like a good guy. He gave God yeah. all the glory at the end of the game. He seems like a good guy. Uh, and most really of the, good guy. you know, most of the players out there, most of the, uh, the coaches are, are, are top, top notch on both sides. But it says right here that uh, Kelsey said later that, that he apologized yeah, but on, but on social media, many say it should be a public apology. Yeah, and so uh, he just yeah it disappointed me because I thought he's a pretty nice well, guy. And, well, but, a couple of games ago, he threw a helmet did. across the right. a field. I mean, just right. he's a big baby. You the know? moment won't define him, but yeah, you have to make it I right, like he said. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah, I probably think, not. But. Yeah. I mean, like you said, an out like a game. We have no idea, like the context too. Like Andy Reid, I'm guessing a coach probably gets. They probably have to get in heated exchanges, sure. Like a coach and a player, and yeah. so maybe those heated exchanges are a lot more. I I said to you, um, if you watch the clip closely, Andy Reid actually reached out to like grab his arm, like to say, "Hey, like get back here, let me explain it to you." And it was like, you know, so it looked to me, a- Andy Reid, it looked like something that maybe happens, like you said, more than it should, or right. more often than it should. Um, and so, yeah, I mean, it's one I, moment. I, I see what Vince is yeah. saying, but I think there's no excuse for it. No. Right. You I'm not do not a humiliate pass. a coach on yeah. national, on the national stage, an older well, coach, an elder. He didn't, you just don't do that. He didn't humiliate the coach. He humiliated himself. That's true. I you agree know, with that. He really did. Yeah. And so that's unfortunate. I'm it's not true. a fan of the guy right now. Uh, but if he turns around and changes his yeah. ways and he starts being respectful and says, hey, I'm, you know, then uh, you a public your, apology would be nice. I would accept that. And maybe, yeah. yeah. Did you get your uh, uh, your Swifty fix? Did you get enough Taylor Swift reaction? I thought it was good. I yeah. I'm glad they kept going. I like to see what she was thinking, and and uh, I mean it's entertainment. Come on. There was a um, um, there's a, a clip going around <laughs> online of uh, her guest, uh, this orange haired girl. I don't know her name, uh, but her your guest and she was doing like devil signs. <laughs> um, in the thing, she had it. <laughs> no, but legitimately, like, no, no, like right. she had like an upside down like cross, cross uh, yeah. uh, necklace. Her oh, guest, I didn't see that. Uh, and she's doing devil signs. She, they, oh. Everybody said she was summoning demons. I don't know, man. <laughs> yeah, it's weird. It got weird. And, and so, one of the things I did want to talk about is the ad, that Super Bowl ad, because I feel like, uh, you know, we're not football commentators necessarily, although, Dad, you could probably be a football commentary <laughs> uh, guy. Uh, but we are, our wheelhouse is talking about religion, talking about God, talking about Jesus. And uh, they had that commercial again this year, the, the, the same, not the same commercial, but the same uh, outfit, uh, this He Gets Us um, outfit, uh, put out a commercial. Um, and in the commercial... There's just these still images of people washing each other's feet and in different. Now, it's not just people washing each other's feet. It's um, people that we would identify a certain way uh, washing each other's feet. Now, uh, I've learned not to judge and not to make assumptions based on people's looks. Mm -hmm. But culturally, we we do that. Right. Mm -hmm. Excuse me. And so um, this ad uh, just shows these different um, pictures of what we would perceive as uh, somebody who just went into um, uh, an, an abortion clinic, right? Which it, you can tell because there's the the clinic right. behind yeah. this young girl. So you assume a lot of assumptions going on there. Um, maybe a trans person. There was uh, some people of different races, different cultures, different ethnic, uh, you know, some they showed like a migrant bus. Um, right. Uh, all these different things. And so uh, there was the, the, the ad happened. And then at the end, it says uh, that he gets us. Jesus gets us. Um, he Jesus didn't teach hate. He washed feet. And, um, it was interesting because, you know, as, as a Christian, you kind of have, uh, you have this moment of that just represented me, right? Like, like that's, that's the feeling. And then I think we all have these feelings of, did that really represent me? Right? Like, is that like, I, I don't know. It's kind of a weird thing. And I don't want to be a hater because I am very thankful for the fact that people are talking about Jesus today, Mm -hmm. because I think that that could have a lot of um, impact on hopefully people looking into Jesus themselves. I hope my hope and prayer is that people won't get caught up in the social media discussions, which is probably what most people will do. My hope and prayer is that people will go and open up a Bible and will read about Jesus because of that 
because yeah, of that. Yeah, and I think that's highly possible. I understand what they were trying to do. I think the concept was kind of cool, but the packaging was off. Mm-hmm. Uh, I don't think they did it right for numerous reasons. But again, let me say something that maybe we need to, you know, kind of focus in on at the outset here. There was a man of God one day, and I forgot who he was. I forgot his name, but he was pretty famous. And one day, uh, I think he had preached a sermon, was standing in the back greeting people on the way out, and somebody criticized what he was doing and saying or whatever. And he said back to them, he said, well, you know what? I like the way I'm doing it better than the way you're not doing it. Mm. And I mean, these guys are doing something. And like you say, God can use it in, a, in a, all kinds of ways. Uh, great marketing strategy. I understand that. You see him uh, at the baseball games on the back wall. Sometimes he gets us. Right. And I, I've been kind of happy with some of their uh, commercials and the way they've done them. But today I, I'd seen you earlier that uh, the left and the right was both on their case. Well, yeah, I mean, it, it, it definitely, it's, it's actually one of the most talked about ads, so that's interesting. Uh, mm. But the other thing that, that's interesting is that the far left has a lot of ammo because um, the they are calling these people that are behind this ad out uh, for... Um, uh, hypocrisy because one of the main backers of the campaign, which is behind a, uh, a nonprofit, um, the servant foundation, I think it's called. And this billionaire, David green, who is, he's the owner of Hobby Lobby, uh-huh. right? So if you see Hobby Lobby connected to this ad, that's the connection. So this guy donates to this foundation, this foundation hired a, um, a legit advertisement company, mm-hmm. right? Who creates big ads, hired this company to create this ad. So um, where was I going with that? Basically uh, this guy who donates to this also donates to um, groups that the far left would see as hateful mm-hmm. um, uh, donates to um, anti LGBTQ uh, comp- uh, found foundations um, donates to uh, anti-abortion, right? Uh, fund foundations that support anti-abortion. Um, and laws and whatnot. And so <clears throat> not that, and I'm not saying that that's bad. N- none of that's bad. It's just people are going to use the ammo that they have, right, to build a case. And so the left is doing that. And the right, the far right, or the people, uh, not far right, sorry, certain religious folks right. are are saying that this doesn't represent us, that it shows, that it's basically showing that um a foot sin fetish. is okay a uh, foot fetish that was the far <laughs> yes people well you got the jokesters on the on the right. left you know these these media people the trolls. they're saying oh it's foot fetish you know whatever right, right. and that's just ridiculous uh then you have the people on the right who are uh the religious right who are saying that that um this this basically shows that sin is okay and blah 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 and this and that so mm. so you have people that are just angry on all sides what i think is terrible and this is sad is it reveals a crack in our foundation as christians right and it shows the world how divided we are as christians mm. i mean because we are well they even used a concept that no one can relate to and it's it's uh, they don't understand that probably. they don't understand at all. Yeah. I mean, That's come on, if you're going to reach yeah. the world, use a concept they can relate to. Right? Do I believe in foot washing? Absolutely, I'm not going to do it. Like, and I I, uh, I think I'm bothered just because I think that they. It's easy when you have a lot of money. It's easy to donate and then kind of like hand over the responsibility to other people. Right. And I think that they handed it over to an ad agency who has a bunch of cre- like. How, like, did they pray that through? Did they like? Fo- I don't know. Hmm. I I think they like. It, no, somebody missed it. Somebody flat out missed it. Like no. a better ad would have been, hey guys, I only have ten seconds because we spent most of our budget right. on helping these people over here, mm-hmm. and I just want to let you guys know that. And Jesus loves you. Like that would have been a better right. ad. Well, let's, you know go, I mean? let's go back to the whole idea of foot washing. Do I do I go to foot washing services? Do I believe that we're supposed to wash one another's feet today? No, absolutely not. I want nothing to do with that. Well, I think that's the confusing. As far that's as the confusing. The literal. The that's, literal that's, that is the confusing part because uh-huh. people aren't. Uh, most people that don't go to church 
aren't looking at foot washing as a no. uh, um, as a kind of uh, right. idea ideology behind serving in general, right? Well, like they're looking at they're looking at they're going wait what do people do? What yeah. do these Christians no, do? They, they have no clue. What do they do? Again, let's go back Why? to the Bible. Why Let, do they let's, do that? Let's focus this. Let's let's look at it. Uh, Jesus, you know, he uh, washed the feet of the disciples. Mm -hmm. And you got to go back to that culture. They wore sandals. Their feet got dirty regularly. Mm -hmm. And it was a custom that when you would go to someone's house, probably the servant or somebody would come out, wash your feet, which would be refreshing. Yeah. Again, I've given the congregation, this is something that God gave me just two weeks ago. I'd never really thought of it before. If you want to take a a thing in scripture and try to make a doctrine out of it and go, we do foot washing services every Wednesday night because it's part of our uh, religious doctrine. Uh, I gave them uh, an acrostic and it's S E F. And so if we apply that, it st S stands for scriptural, E stands for experience, F stands for fruitful. If we took this and said, we want to make a doctrine out of it, we'd go, okay, is it scriptural? that Jesus washed people's feet and told us to do the same. Yes, that's scriptural. Okay, in experience, does it, does it bear out? No, absolutely not. Like culturally, it, do we do this? You no, know, people would, would be turned off. It, yeah. it doesn't work out. It does not bear fruit in our culture. So when this SCF doesn't work out, you have to go back and say, let's take a look at this thing all over again. Yeah. Something's wrong with the way we're interpreting so, it. So I will say, I'm gonna, and I'm not backtracking here, I just want to make sure people understand that we're not just hating on this because I do. I am thankful that somebody's doing something. Yes, I agree. Um, I'm thankful that this 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 Christian man um, who is a billionaire who has been blessed by God is using yes. some of his funds to do it could what be he the, believes is right. But yeah, I, I I also hope that they take a turn and they see. I hope they see the conversation that this is causing right. and that they take the turn to go back to the drawing board and 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 understand how to better. Mm -hmm. Uh, get this, mm -hmm. uh, get this, uh, you know, message out there because oh. there's two different messages. Like, Dad, yeah, let me ask you this real quick. If you were to take a speaking gig, um, and you knew that you were going to go to a college, let's say a public college, uh, in a non-Christian college, and you were going to speak in, uh, primarily to unbelievers, would your message be different than it would be on a Sunday morning at church? Absolutely. Right. Absolutely. And, you know, how would you even go about doing that? Like, would it be, would you bring religious ideology into that sermon or would it be more like, Hey, like hmm. God reached, I know your story. I, I, so I, I, would, I, I would go off of that concept. God gets you. He gets me. Hmm. I'd probably come in and start it in some way. Like, you know what? I used to be where you're at. Right. And I, I understand I get it, guys, that a lot of you say, I don't even think God exists. I get it. So I'd probably start on that that kind of platform there going, I understand where you're at. Can I share my story? Right. Uh, so going back, here, here's the, the problem. The problem is, uh, again, I'll, I'll rephrase it, kind of like what the He Gets Us program's doing. I kind of like, you know, maybe that they're doing something better than people that are sitting back criticizing they're doing nothing. Mm -hmm. At least they're out there trying. Right. Was the concept, could it be take, can it be taken wrong? Oh, absolutely. Do I think they use the wrong uh, concept? Uh, uh, the packaging anyway, the packaging is off. Also, I think if they would have like had an image of actually Jesus washing those people, everyone's feet, yeah. it would have been better. Been better. Than, it would have been better. It would have been better than like having, you know, the random, random people. I think that was the biggest takeaway. It was like, I think I told you before the podcast, like it was like a, they stereotyped a lot of people. They even did. the pastor, even they the really, religious person, they, they, they put the, re they put the religious people. pastor yeah. in a suit and, you they know, stereotyped like, everyone. Right. And then they yeah. stereotyped. So it was like, 100%. It, because it could have just been people washing. Like if you came into our church, yeah. you sometimes, and for the good or the bad, you couldn't tell the pastor different from the congregation, right. you know, because it's a yeah. great mix of people. It's, right. There's not this big division. It wasn't um, based in reality. Right. It, That's it, what it I'm really saying. No, I like what Vince said, though. Vince hit a point because I was thinking that, too. They did stereotype a bunch of people. On, that on both sides. They, they, they really and I, did. And I, I yeah. didn't think that was. It was very it judgmental. Was not, it was very judgmental on both yeah, sides. But it was. With here's, that, here's the peons. Here's the, here's yes, the yeah. you know, here's yes. get, getting out of the uh, yes. bus here's the poor here from working in the field. 100%. Yeah, I didn't like that part of it. But I will say. On the other side, 
it, they could have been very smart. I'm not saying they were, but we can give them some, maybe some uh, credit here. Maybe they went after the religious people in that ad and they were very pointed and like, who will understand the feet washing? They went mm-hmm. after the people that are on the other side. I that, think that's what it was pointed at mostly. Right. Maybe and they didn't want to reach the crowd. They wanted right. to reach a very specific set of people. I think that's what it was pointed at mostly, but it, that's not how the messaging of that came, entire organization came comes off. across. Right. Well, let's so. give them the benefit of the doubt. They made a mistake. Hopefully they'll see it because uh, it had uh, messages that, that I could see would bother the people on the far right, especially. Well, but, but. Let me bring this back around yeah. to another thought. Here's the problem. People don't understand Jesus. They don't understand Christianity. I say people don't. A big majority of people do, don't get it. Uh, if, if more people really understood our Jesus, if they really understood the Christian message, we'd have to have 30 services on the weekend. Mm. We, we would have constant services back to back, back to back, back to back, back to back. They don't get it. I would say that probably a large percentage of our listeners today out there, probably that aren't believers, probably have never seen or been around too many real Christian people that are living the life. I think there are so many Christians out there today, bless their hearts, that have a a uh, type of godliness. They have a, a religion. They... They have a set way of living that probably would not have been defined as Christian living in the New Testament. Mm. And I think that's our problem. Uh, These Mormon boys that came to my door, uh, I was trying to say to them, I guess, a roundabout way, Jesus gets you guys. He gets you. You've been taught this way, maybe passed down from parents, grandparents, and you feel like you're doing right, although you're probably being misled. But nevertheless, he gets you. You, you. you love God. That's why you're out here. That's why you're doing that. And I think he'll meet you in that that place where you're at. Well, again, and that's what I was saying. Again, like I said, I'm glad that people are talking about Jesus today yes. because of the ads. Yes. I really am. Um, and I just hope that they see the conversation. This is starting. And I hope that they can... I'm nervous that they're going to double down on that. I don't want them to double down on that side of the conversation. I hope and pray that they go back to the drawing board and pray this through on how to move forward because they seem like they have a lot of resources Mm -hmm. and it seems like they're not stopping. It seems like they have a lot of uh, influence. They're, they're, They're gathering a lot of attention. And with that influence, with that attention, I think we as a church can pray for them that they would have... Uh, wisdom on how to use that. Even if the far right forward. would just step back and yeah. say, okay, I get it. That's another thing that I was saying before. Um, it, again, I'll say it, it really did cause people to understand how much the church is divided. Yeah. You know, and um, we are, we're divided and it stinks. But at the same time, there's a positive side to that. The positive side, not to the division, but the to the um, differences in each church, the positive side to that is that in there's a church for everyone. There's, mm-hmm. there's a church for you. You know, if you don't go to church, yeah. there is a church for you. Keep trying different but churches. But what did they want? They want us to go out and say, you're going to hell and have flames and stuff. I mean, that's not going to win the lost. Nah. Uh, you one can't of, threaten them into the kingdom. One of the other things that got brought up, and I would love to hear your opinion on this, and I, I think we're pretty balanced, but one of the other big things that people talked about today on both sides was the use of the money. They said you had $7 million to, uh, to put a Super Bowl ad on, and that was the best way as a organiz- a Christian organization, right? And I don't even know if they're a Christian Is it only $7 million now? Because I feel like it's been $7 million for 10 well, years. Well, this no is, inflation. There's a, the $7 million is what I've heard because Kanye, came, Kanye uh, West also has a uh, Super Bowl ad. Did you see it? Uh-uh. And it was on a cell phone. And he's like, I used all my $7 million, and so it's on my cell So he made a video of himself talking to the cell phone. Uh, and so the $7 million is just it. like... I guess the number, but anyways, they said basically they could have taken that seven million dollars and you know actually made an impact in the communities that they're a part of. And mm-hmm. what I would say to those people are the very people that are making those comments: How much do you give to the kingdom of God? That's good. And I'll bet you they give zero. Okay. I bet they give zero. Uh, you know, again, who are we to judge the servant of another? Right. That's what the Bible says. Yeah. I mean, at least they're trying to do something right. They got it wrong on this one, I think, and a lot of people do think. But let's step back and just say, hey, 
at least God had something to work with. He, yeah. He'll show people that Jesus did love everybody. He that's, did. That's good. That's a good take. Uh, I was. I told Josh earlier today when we was talking about it, because that's kind of the big argument. That was the flame that I saw this morning where people were getting upset. And well, I took it like, because everybody has a different calling. Like God gave them that organization. Yeah. I think I told you that seven men, maybe that's where he felt yes. like he would make the biggest impact. Again, so, it, he's, I mean, I, I don't want to make any assumptions. Here, right, right. But. If, if you're a billionaire and you own a large company, you right. have to donate a certain amount of money to avoid paying taxes. Got, got it. But it would it have been better had they... <laughs> Just saying. What, no, right. Like, it's yeah, not yeah, a yeah. super I see. selfless what thing. What would be better today? Well, we don't know that. But I don't yeah. know that. Yeah, yeah. What would be better today? Had they not done anything or they did what some people think was the wrong thing? Which is the best scenario? I don't know. I mean... I, I do. I do. I'm going the, back and forth. has got people talking. Yeah, I'm going back and forth on it because... It has people talking. Because you, if you give a negative, uh, if you put Jesus in a negative light, that's not good. You know, that's not right. Um, but at the same time, it does get people thinking and talking. And so, again, I think I, here's, here's my spiel. My biggest spiel is us as Christians. Yes, we can discuss it. Yes, we can talk about it. But we need to pray that, that the effects of this would be good. And how many of us are spending the time praying yeah, that's for that? true. I did pray versus, that God will plant versus complaining seeds. about it today, and, that's, and it was and, it, and I'm it was too. meant to be a positive thing. Hundred percent, it was meant yeah. to be. I think they were like saying, "Hey, like love your neighbor, love people." Yeah, and some people, people love yeah. the ads. They, yeah, some people love them. Yeah, you know, my kids watched it. We, you know, with us, our and what was daughter. their reaction? Yeah, they I, they didn't have any. I mean, we kind of you know uh, we soaked it in as adults with our with our lenses with our view of the world, right. and we're like. That was interesting. Our kids right. were like, oh, like Jesus. Like, you know, like they were excited to see th- it. To see that there was some representation of something yes. that they believed that's in. Cool. Positive. No, that's positive. So I, I think it's it's hard because we have all these filters and lenses that we think about and we're like, man, this could be taken wrong or this could yeah. be taken right or they should have did this. I I was so upset when they had I, I don't know why. I was just like, why did they dress that priest up? I'm like, why did they have to do like because right. I was like, that's not that's what, funny. But I, that was the thing that it's irked, funny irked that, me. The thing that bothered me the most. Bo- there's like different things that bother yeah. us. And they, again, we're professional ministry people, which <laughs> right. is like yeah. we're, we're a little jaded and it's a little sure. different for us. Right. So I think yeah. most people even listening to this podcast are like, what are you guys? Why are you guys even talking about this? Right, right, right. But, right, right. Um, because we care, we care a lot about how Jesus is represented and how the church is represented. But what was what, the part that you didn't like? What bothered me the most was that the the, the images were totally fake like you they, they looked were AI. fake they look like ai they weren't uh, real. generated images if they weren't ai they were highly highly processed and i they just didn't it's funny that that's what bothered you like that bothered yeah. me because it just seemed it like, seemed like fake scenario kind of thing totally yeah. i mean it wasn't just not based in reality with the concept it was right. not based in reality with the whole well thing, they tried you know? to do something they did. because here's the deal christians aren't out at the bus stop where the migrants are coming in uh, serving people, Christians aren't out um, uh, in well, front of the in I, front of the abortion clinics. And I think serving there people. are some, not many, though. not many though. Not I agree many. with you, but that's the ad was to put you in that thing. Most of, of like, the most of the be. American church, uh, sure, is is more along the lines of I'm going to pick it. Not the people we we know and talk to. I think our church is pretty amazing uh, in in serving, but we we we're still we still have a long way to go. Obviously, right? Uh, but but you know, there, there's these people that come, and I don't want to offend anybody, but there are these people that come and they really push hard. They want us to put a bunch of crosses in our church lawn. And that represents how many aborted babies there were. Right. And I won't do, I, I always say, and not that it's just my decision, but I've always said, I'm very passionate about not doing that because I know that there are people that come to our church who have had abortions and God has forgiven them. And I don't want them to go back to this place where they, before they were forgiven and feel this shame. And not come to God. Yeah, I don't want that. Now I'm pro life, hundred percent right, pro life. Right, right, I right. really am. I I don't want any baby to be aborted ever. But I also know that there's a right way and a wrong way to go about sharing that. Mm-hmm. You know, I want. I, look, there are circumstances that these women go through that I don't understand. Mm-hmm. That I don't understand. They are going through probably the worst time in their entire life. They fall alone. There's some people that have been assaulted. There are people that uh, there's incest situations. I know those are rare. Those are rare, but those do happen. And then there's women who just, they, 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 you know, and this is a terrible thing that this is even an option. I hope and pray that every single woman that's out there um, considers uh, having the baby and then, and then adopt, putting the baby up for adoption because that is so much of a better option. But there's a lot of women that don't believe that. They believe that, 
that, you know, this baby's going to, that they're going to have a terrible life. And and so here's another argument. Here's another thing as a Christian, mm. and this is not popular. I'm going to get, I'm going to go ahead and go out. And I already win. know where you're going. If a baby's aborted, where do they go? Yeah. Straight to heaven, straight to heaven, right? They do. They go straight to heaven and they don't get a chance to live on, on, on earth. And that's terrible. But the chances of them going to heaven with their, if they're born into this terrible world under these terrible circumstances are less. And so here, I'm not saying that I'm for abortion, but I am saying that we don't under, it's, it's so much easier Empathy. for us yeah. as a church yeah. to just go out there with those signs or, right. or, or post on Facebook, which is the new way of having to sign post right. on Facebook and say, you know, uh, basically put this, 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 uh, this heavier load on these people that are already heavily loaded, mm-hmm. right? And saying that you're wrong, you're going to hell because of this. Mm-hmm. Like we need to be, if you're going to be a loving person, like, yeah, go to the, go to the abortion clinic and yes, wash the feet, you know, serve. Yeah, yeah. Right. Yeah. Have let, let's focus feet. though. Anyway. On the real I sin. Like the, the, the real big sin in this uh, whole scenario, I think, is that God has not given anybody the right to take a life, mm-hmm. period. Right. And I and think I agree if with that. we look at that, no one has a right to take a baby's life. And, uh, and so that's also, where, that's but, where the real sin but comes my into the thing, picture. My big thing is, you know, uh, if you're going to fight the good fight, do it through serving, do it through loving. Right, you right. know what I mean? Don't do it through Facebook fighting. Well, we can get worked <laughs> right. up about all these things because we live in a, a nation today that's largely pagan. Yeah. No, it's paganistic not, in its beliefs. It's not going in the right direction, that's for sure. Uh, yeah. And so I know that's hard to hear, but I mean, I can't even in my most dark areas of my mind comprehend someone that would kill a living baby. Yeah. And I mean, we can get going here and it just bothers a day. Well, you, you have the other end of it too. You have the full puzzle because one of the things that you're really passionate about pastor is foster care and making yes. sure kids aren't alone. Yes. So it's like, it's one thing, like you said, Josh, to tell somebody don't have an abortion, give the child up for adoption. And right. then for the church to scream that, but then not be involved in the foster care system and not right. be trying right, to. Right, right. So it's like. It's both. You Agreed. have to be proactive. Right. And so it's like, you and we do that. No, we do not. That's what I'm saying. So and it's, from a political standpoint, right. um, I don't understand for the life of me why we don't go after fathers more. I don't understand that. Well, you said something interesting a second ago. It made me think that's why I said, hmm, because I was like processing as you were talking. You said, um, you know, these, these, these uh, women are giving these, you know, they're, they have, they're having an abortion. They'd rather do that than do adoption. And I was thinking like, how many fathers are out there? You know, if something happened in their marriage, that they would that they would would not want somebody else raising their kid, mm. like they would not like the thought of that er, kills them like at their yeah, core, you right. know. And I'm like thinking, what is this mom going through? Like, I don't want somebody else raising, the, you know. So it's like, yeah. and I'm not saying that's justified. Well, I'm just saying it's I like think the, the point empathy. That, I think the point yeah. that we're both making is that these people are going through the hardest time the of hardest their, time in of their, their life. life, and the church isn't very good. We went to a conference um, meeting them there with Rob Bell. It was like this little mini conference we did. And, um, and I know he's not, has a lot of, he has a lot of unpopular <laughs> opinions. So we won't even get into those weeds, but this pastor was there and he shared with Rob that he wanted to get involved into the, and basically in the, um, like the clinic, Foster. Like, fo- not, not foster care, but he wanted to be more involved in the abortion clinics and stuff. And Rob said to him, go down there and hold their hands right. and pray with them. Right. And then on the other side of it, be there for him. Right, right, right. And, right, right. I, and it wasn't that he was saying, yes, like, go hold their hands and take them to the abortion clinic to have abortions. It was saying, be there with them before, but right. also be with them after. And I thought that's so good because how many of us are like, hey, look, I want to help you. I want to help you. Please don't get an abortion. Then they do get an abortion yeah. and the church leaves. If you do take that image from the ad where the woman is washing the feet of the young girl in front of the abortion clinic, if you took, if you do, if you do take that idea of somebody who, like you said, is going in or after they're going out, after they're coming out, after they're coming out, still loving them, still loving them. Yeah. It, that's a beautiful, yeah. that's, that's a beautiful yeah. image. Today, the church is, is in a position where it's, it's kind of tough at times. Hate we are the, called to speak out against sin. Hate the we sin. are, hate the we sin. are, hate the sin, yeah. but love the sinner. Love and the I know sinner. that sounds cliche, but it is true, but it is biblical, Yeah. but we have to be able to speak the truth in love. And I think some people in the church are afraid to say abortion's a sin. Oh, it's definitely a sin. And a lot of church people even don't want to hear but that. It's, but it is a sin. But it's also the result 
of sin, sin. in yep. general, of, right. of the sickness that's in this world. Right? right. Yeah. I mean, it is. I mean, you think about somebody who's born with a disability and it's not their fault, right? Yes. It's not their fault to be born with a disability, but that is the effect of the sickness that's in this world, hmm. which came into this world through Adam and Eve. You know right, what I mean? Like, right. it, And that sickness is in the world. And so like, for us to understand who Jesus is in the yes. mix of all this, he's the one that heals. I talked on uh, this last Sunday about uh, the woman who had the, the the hemorrhage and she reached, she, she had to, we, we assume she pushed through the crowd um, uh, to touch his cloak and then she was healed. It was interesting because a lot of people were crowding in on Jesus. A lot of people touched Jesus that day. A lot of people brushed it against them. A lot of people, uh, you know, felt his his presence that day. Yet he didn't feel them. He felt the woman who pushed through, who wanted him, him, mm-hmm. that wanted his healing. Mm-hmm. And you think about who Jesus is in that respect. He was, he was drawn to the one that was in the most need. Mm-hmm. And, and that's who, that's who he is to me. And that's who he is to us uh, as believers. And so Going back to the ad again, not to keep bringing that up, but the concept behind the idea of that, you know, Jesus served people and loved them is so true. It really is. Um, The unfortunate part about the ad is that in this society's day and age, they can look up the other people that are involved in it and they can find other things and they can build this case and it causes all this controversy online. But again, I just hope, I, I don't know if it's good or bad. I just hope that people pray when they see stuff like this, that we all, when we, when we see stuff like this, that we pray that God would use it for good. Well, you know what? I, I've had probably 15 or 20 counseling sessions very similar to this. Someone comes in and they go, you know what? I had an abortion. I uh, had it last week or whatever, and I'm in here. I'm being bothered by mm-hmm. it. Or on the other hand, some people say, you know what? Uh, I've committed adultery. Uh, I'm, I'm coming to you with my 18-year-old girlfriend. She's pregnant. And I usually minister in this kind of spirit going, well, you know what you did was a sin. But the great news I have for you today is that Jesus forgives sins. Mm. And so let's pray before we even go any further and say, Lord, we, we committed a sin and this mm. is wrong. Forgive us. And then I spend the next 40 minutes or 30 on the life that Jesus has for us. I don't, I don't sit there and keep focusing mm. on the sin. Yeah, we right. ask for forgiveness. We, we do call it a sin. I say, you know, no two ways about it. You sin before God, right? but he, he's, he forgives us. See, again, there's so many things that we don't know about Jesus. I'm saying we don't know that the world at large does not know about Jesus. Number one is that he went, a, he, he, he's, he went out to seek after the sick the unhealthy. Mm -hmm. He didn't come to give a lot of his time to those who were spiritually healthy and thought they had arrived. He said, I'm going after those who know they're sick and know they're unhealthy. (laughs) And when you see that, you see all the compassion of Jesus. I mean, again, it blows me away when I read a story in the Bible where he's preaching to a multitude. And at one point, his burden became very, very great for those people because they were hungry. Mm. He said, almost like I can hear their stomachs growling. They're hungry. They've been hours without anything to eat. We must give them something to eat. Now, for someone like me that, you know, does 72-hour water fasts every month, uh, you know, it's no big deal. Jesus, come on, they can get over it. Let's just keep on (laughs) moving here. But that shows you the great compassion that he has. Yeah. He didn't want them to be uncomfortable. Well, there were children there. He didn't want them to go away hungry. And when we start seeing this about Jesus, it gives us a whole different perspective. The Bible says that the kindness of God leads us to repentance. And what that means is when we see the kindness of God, it leads us to a place in our life where we start having different thoughts about him going, Mm. wow, I never saw that before. How Jesus ministered so much out of compassion and they, they don't understand that about him if they knew how loving he was and how much he cares for his people and right. and on and on and on. Um, the world at large probably doesn't understand that when we give our lives to God and come to a place where we say, Lord, I want to receive you as my Lord and Savior. I want to be born again today, that he actually comes his, in spirit form and starts living in us. Hmm. The Holy Spirit comes. 
Now, if they understood this, to have, have the Holy Spirit of God living inside of us, the person of Jesus living inside of us, that's the most radical thought. They're not being taught that. I actually remember, and this is going to blow you away, and it just came to my mind now, this might have been years ago, but a girl who had abortion and told me, I didn't know it was a sin. Mm. She had been in a church where she had never been taught that that was a sin. Right. And I said, you didn't know it was a sin? No. That's a sin? Yes. And right. so they don't know. They don't know that not only Jesus wants to live inside of us, which is a crazy thought. Sometimes I compare it to something kind of even uh, crazier on, on the earthly uh, realm uh, viewpoint, I guess you could say, is that think if we could have somebody else's spirit living within us. Um Again, and I hate to even use this, but let's say we had a famous politician spirit living within us. Well, we would start thinking about politics. We would start seeing life differently if his spirit lived within us. Well, the spirit of Jesus lives in us. Not only lives in us, but wants to live through us. Mm. It's the most adventurous lifestyle that I could ever describe walking with God and getting eternal life, getting to live forever. I mean, when they understand all this stuff, all the basics, uh, they're going to think totally different about God. Yeah. Uh, it, it, what concerns me about this state that we're in is that the church is being pressured to um, focus way more on political issues and fighting people politically right. uh, than they are with loving others and loving God. Mm -hmm. and, and and that's an issue. And, and there are people... Um, you know, in the conservative movement that are pressuring. There was a new book written um, recently, and I don't know, Eric Metaxas, I think he wrote the book. Yeah. I haven't read the book, so, or maybe it's a movie. I don't even know. But I just heard him on a commercial saying that the church, the church doesn't understand this, how, you know, all these churches are becoming, or the people don't understand that all these churches are becoming woke. And like he's kind of causing people to, rise up and, and, and look at their own church leaders and kind of right. question them because they're not involved in politics. Right. I think that's completely wrong. Sure. I'm just going to say I that. Did, I did skim through this book. I know what you're um, talking if, about. But I do need to read the book. I do need to yeah. listen to it. So forgive me if I, you know, if I am misrepresenting this, but I'm basing this off this ad that this guy put out. Um, look, I think it's good to be informed. I think it's okay to be involved in politics. I think that's great. And we have politicians. We, we, one of our good friends is a politician, did yes. a lot of great in our local community, did some wonderful things. But the original church almost missed Jesus. Right. The church almost didn't start because they were so concerned politically. They thought mm -hmm. that Jesus and his entire movement was a political movement. Right. They thought that his entire movement was about restoring the country of Israel when the entire movement mm -hmm. was about saving humanity. They mi almost missed Jesus. Make yes. Israel great again. Because of that. <laughs> yeah. So John uh, the Baptist was confused going, man. Mm, so uh, you, you, yeah. you political commentators, you people that need to sell movies and books, yes. you put pressure on us. I'm going to tell you, you're wrong. You're wrong. You right. need to understand yeah. what Jesus, who Jesus actually is. Yeah. That he's here for everyone. He's here for the liberals. He's here for the conservatives. He's here for everybody, w period. Why do you think people get so mad about like when when you say when you say things like that, like mm -hmm. no, I know they're gonna get mad at me, yeah, right, right. But I'll I'm just get, saying, why, no, but why do you think people are so like they tie Jesus to the republic? Like what? Like I'll just say, like they. Do you want to know my real opinion on that? Well, kind of, yeah. Okay. I don't want to hear you, some I'll, fake opinion. I'll tell you my real yeah. opinion. My real opinion <laughs> is I think people uh, are called to a mission, and I think that that they confuse their mission sometimes with something else. Okay, and I think that we get really passionate about things that seem right because you have a lot of voices uh, mm -hmm. that are encouraging you to go that direction. Yeah. And we forget to stay on our knees. We forget to stay That's at good. the altar. We forget to continue to ask Jesus what it is. Because if you look at Jesus, even in, even in his ministry, he never followed the crowd. He didn't follow the crowd. Right. I mean, in Mark chapter one, we have Jesus. So there's all these miracles happening. All these things are happening at Peter, mm -hmm. Peter's mother-in-law's house. And they, 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 uh, he, he breaks away and he goes and prays by himself in the, in the, in the, uh, middle of the night. And these, 
his new disciples, fresh disciples, they come find him and say, come back to the house. We have more to do. Mm -hmm. He says, no, we're leaving this place. We're going to a different place because he followed the father. He followed the Holy spirit. He didn't follow the crowd. Mm. And so I think it's going to be very interesting for Christians in the next few months, in the next few years. Um, I think the fight is to not get too, and again, it's okay to be involved in politics. It's good to be informed, right? It's good to be a part of the conversation, right? It is not good to make that your number one mission yeah. and, 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 and to make, you know, uh, saving our country a bigger mission than saving the how lost. many, how many mm, social issues, so how many social issues did Jesus major on? In the Gospels, right, and, and there was all kinds of things going on around him. Sure, I mean there was all yeah. kinds of, of you know, these uh, oh, immoral man. sexual yeah. right. parties going on, yeah. and the Romans were just frolicking in this stuff. Uh, Jesus and, defeated sin. Yes, he didn't fight sin. He defeated it by serving, by loving, by being strong, very right. strong. And that's the thing. Like that's the thing. These political commentators are saying that church uh, leaders are weak if they don't follow. And the, that is wrong. Damn, politically, I agree. You know what? <laughs> they have no I idea what they're talking about. I don't major on politics. I major on the gospel. Yeah. I always will because I think that's what Jesus did. And again, I'm not saying not to that. It's bad to be involved say, in politics. I was going to say that. Is is there a place where we say, "Hey, we're registering voters today. You need to vote. Sure. You need to vote according to your values." It's just what we major on. It is perfectly okay to be proud of your country, and it's perfectly okay to well, try to save. I said what, you what can, we major on. To, let me finish. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What we major on. We don't major on politics. Oh, we agree. Yeah. We major on the gospel. Yeah. And but so there's a place. And again, my wife has told me for years. She said the word ought to be used in the Bible more called balance. Mm. We must balance these things out. I'm going uh, to, and let me just say this. I apologize for jumping to conclusions on this Eric Metaxas guy and what he meant. But based on that ad, I didn't like it. So I, I'm, but I'm going to go back and I'm going to, I'm going to watch the movie or I'm read the book or whatever it is. I'm going to find out what he's yes, actually after. Yes. And we will talk about this more. But I, as, as of right now, I heard him on Charlie, whatever his pot, uh, show and I didn't like it. Yeah. I didn't like now it. Now it's fair. So, yeah. yeah. Well, bottom line is, and I, I debate this with some pastors sometimes. See, I don't want to uh, be a Republican Party church. Uh, I want to be a church where Democrats come, Republicans come, because they all need saving. Mm. I, I, you know, one side's right on these issues, the other side's right on these issues. Sure. Obviously, I identify with the Republican Party more. Yeah. Because they have key issues that I'm very, very concerned about. Well, here's, about here's the and, thing: if, and value. If you're gonna fight politically, then you're turning you're turning half of the country off to any message that you would have spiritually. Right. right? Um, and if that's your thing, then that's your thing. I'm not gonna. I want them all you know. to come to salvation in Jesus Christ. I want them all to come. So I want them all to come in. I mean, I. I welcome, uh, you know, every kind of person with, mm-hmm. with different moral values. I welcome them all to church to hear yeah. the gospel and, I, and, and to hear the I'm good news. I'm not shaming somebody for being political. Again, I am saying that I'm not going to fall to that pressure personally. Yeah. Right. I'm not going to do Well, it. the very thing I never want this podcast to become is a preaching platform, and it kind of sounds like we're doing that That's because we're preachers. Uh, what, do you, what do we do? Yeah, what, what else are we going to do? do? Yeah. But you know what's cool about this is you— in this podcast, we don't have the um, uh, standards that we have on the pulpit. There are right. different standards, right. I, I believe. Right. And so on the pulpit, you're not going to hear me share my opinions very much. Right. I'm going to share what God what God has put on my heart and what I've learned through the scripture to share. That's what I'm going to learn. That's what I'm going to share on the pulpit because that is my duty yes. on the pulpit. This, I can share a lot more of my opinion. You can see where I'm coming from. Right. And you can judge me on that. You know what I mean? And that's fine. But Well, um, I'm not going to go out on Sunday and, and speak a sermon on uh, why abortion is sin and, and major right. on that all Sunday morning. Right. I might mention that in my sermon if it comes up in a text, but I might come out and do a sermon how God is bigger than abortion. Yeah, He's right. bigger than abortion. Right. Uh, and so anyway, long story short, we should put a link on at the end of this podcast uh, on that commercial, so people will know what we're talking. Yeah, about. I'll, I'll, he gets a stutter put a link yeah. on there. Yeah, and pray for and those people. You know, pray for the people that are leading that. Uh, well, that I, you know, and, and, and can you can you at least think that it's possible that whoever came up with that idea and thought it was a terrific idea today is going, oh my gosh, I think I missed it. Very, and that's possible. possible. Yeah. 
Very possible. Uh, but at least they they tried to do something. They're doing something. Yeah, and, exactly. Uh, well, it's funny. We can commentate on the ad just like we commentated on the football game, but we weren't there playing. <laughs> so yes, whole different scenario when you're out there <laughs> with millions and millions of people watching, and you're Brock Purdy in what his second or third year. Ah. Uh, God bless uh, him. You saw I, his parents, man. They were. I hope he has a <laughs> wonderful career. I like that guy. I think the one thing that bugged was since we're off, we're, we're slowing down here. Why is it to like the very last two minutes of the game that they wait to like start making all these plays? It's like they couldn't I score. Know. They couldn't score for. I've always thought that. For, for, I know. They couldn't score for hours. You know how now many more. You know how many more yards left. in drives that they get in the <laughs> last. Yeah, two you got to remember. So that the funny. defense is playing different at the last of the game. Yeah. They're giving them all those cushions. They don't care if they get 10 or 15 yards. They don't care. Yeah. At the end of the game, they're trying to protect from that touchdown. And so the whole idea of the game changes in the last three minutes. It's really interesting. Oh, man. It's crazy. Anyway, love you guys. And uh, if you're angry with me, I will talk to you about it. Okay? I well, can promise you're, you that. If you're angry at me at all, anything I ever say... Write Pastor Hector Rizzo at vbf.org, <laughs> that's and, that's and he'll right. answer your questions yep. for me. <laughs> that's perfect. Mine's going to be Tom Allenbeck because he's not here today. <laughs> yeah. He's sick, poor fellow. Okay, right. love you guys. Love you guys. See you. Bye.